On March 6, 2023, outside the small town of Waynesboro, Georgia, in the United States, something remarkable happened. The third nuclear reactor at the Volkel plant achieved criticality for the very first time. The first time that a new plant has done so in the U.S. in 30 years. And for a country that has more nuclear plants than any other, it's somewhat of an indicator of the industry in general. The successful criticality at Vogel provides a thin ray of hope for the nuclear industry in the U.S., which has been struggling to build nuclear plants for decades. As of this recording, there is only one other unit that is under construction, and that's the twin unit over at Vogel 4. The Vogel project has been in the works for over a decade, and the costs have more than doubled from the original estimates. This is, unfortunately, a familiar story in the nuclear industry, where ambitious projects are plagued by cost overruns and construction delays. As a result, many new nuclear projects in the United States never get past the initial concept stage and are put on hold. Still, the startup at Vogel could provide a blueprint for how to avoid many of these problems. And although it seems challenging, could this be the start of an expansion of nuclear energy? So let's dive in and see what this means for the U.S. nuclear industry. Building a new nuclear plant is a lengthy and complex process that involves many steps to make sure that the facility is designed, built, and operates safely. And perhaps the most important step in this process is the first time the reactor achieves criticality. Now, I'm going to massively simplify here, so please don't go building your own nuclear reactor based off of the back of this video. Once construction is complete, the commissioning phase begins. During this time, the plant performs various tests to ensure that the components and structures are functioning correctly. This includes tests of the reactor, cooling systems, turbine, and other key components. But the most critical step of the commissioning phase is the reactor achieving nuclear criticality. This occurs when the reactor is capable of sustaining the chain reaction, or fission, which generates heat in the reactor core. The reactor is typically loaded with uranium fuel, which is carefully monitored and controlled to make sure that the reactor operates safely and as predicted. Achieving nuclear criticality is a significant milestone in the startup of a new nuclear power plant. It signifies that the reactor is functioning correctly and capable of generating power. This step is essential to demonstrate the safety and reliability of the plant. While that sounds straightforward, Plant Vogel has had anything but an easy journey to get to this point. Vogel Units 3 and 4 are a relatively new design called the AP1000, which is designed by the Westinghouse Electric Company. This new reactor promised to reduce costs by simplifying the design and allowing for modular construction of some of the components. These heavy components would be prepared at a nearby factory and then welded together on site, supposedly streamlining the construction process. These weren't the first AP1000s to be built. Westinghouse successfully built four of them in China, where they entered operation in 2018 and 19. The Vogel project in Georgia started in 2009, when the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, or NRC, issued early permits to begin work on the site, preparing the groundwork and building support structures. The original cost was about $14 million and expected to be online in 2016 for Unit 3 and 17 for Unit 4. However, the problems were almost immediate. In 2011, an earthquake and tsunami in Japan forced an extensive re-evaluation of the design, resulting in several changes to strengthen the plant against natural disasters. It wasn't until 2012 that the NRC officially approved construction of the reactors, but even that decision was not unanimous. The chairman of the panel dissented, saying not enough had been done following the Fukushima disaster. Nevertheless, in March 2013, concrete began to pour of what would eventually become the base mat under Unit 3. However, inexperience by the contractors meant that by June, the project was already 14 months behind schedule. Several problems came up that required changes to the original design, and mistakes during construction led to large amounts of the incorrect type of rebar being used, meaning portions of the concrete had to be dug up and replaced, a costly and time-consuming process for sure. In 2015, the main constructor of the project exited because of these issues, leaving the future of the project uncertain. However, Westinghouse, the reactor designer, stepped in and took over construction. Although they had extensive understanding for designing and maintaining nuclear plants, they actually had very little experience in building them. Since no new plants had been built in the US in 30 years, most of the people who had actually participated in them had long retired. And as you might have guessed, despite the change in leadership, delays and setbacks continued on the project. 
Westinghouse facing mounting losses from Vogel and a similar project in South Carolina, filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in March 2017, leaving the project in a state of limbo once again. Later, it would be Bechtel and Southern Nuclear, the utility and essentially the customer of the project, that would take over the construction from Westinghouse. The work continued along slowly, with cost continuing to climb. As recently as February 2023, vibrations in the cooling system were found, delaying progress while additional supports were installed. The estimated cost of both units is expected to exceed $30 billion, more than double the original estimate. The delays and cost overruns have caused frustration, to say the least, among the stakeholders, and led to questions about the sustainability of the project. Of the $30 billion price tag, the U.S. federal government has contributed $12 billion in federal loan guarantees. The majority of the rest is being paid for by the future customers of Vogel in the form of higher electricity rates. Critics have argued that the delays have increased the overall cost of the project, making it less economically viable in the long run. And while Vogel is owned by a private utility company, its income is guaranteed by the Georgia Public Services Commission, which sets the rates that can be charged to consumers. If this type of public-private relationship didn't exist, it's unlikely that the project would have continued without some sort of other financial support. Nonetheless, with Vogel Unit 3 nearing the end of its commissioning phase and Unit 4 about a year later, what does this mean for the nuclear industry in the US? Surely the startup of a new reactor, even if it is a bit late, does prove its viability. Well, not exactly. The significant delays and cost overruns of the Vogel project are hard to ignore. Its sister project in South Carolina, which was also building two reactors, was abandoned in 2017, after completing about 60% of the project and spending over $9 billion. These are hard experiences to get past and convince other utilities and governments to invest in building their own nuclear power plants. In the US, these two units nearing the end of their construction at Vogel are the only new nuclear power projects in the foreseeable future. The next closest is the carbon-free power project in Idaho, where a group of around 30 cities have joined together to create a demonstration of NuScale's small modular reactor. And that project too is facing rapidly rising costs. While the US operates more nuclear power plants than any other country by a fair margin, there are no other large-scale nuclear power projects on the horizon in the US. With a current fleet of about 92 reactors and an average age of just over 40 years, it's the third oldest in the world behind Belgium and Switzerland. With several plants approaching the end of their life and facing economic difficulties, the US government passed the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law in 2021 that included $6 billion for existing plants to continue operations that might otherwise be shutting down due to age or economic headwinds. The most likely place we'll be seeing large, new plants being built is outside the US. Internationally, there's a lot of activity. Even Westinghouse, which emerged from bankruptcy in 2018, is actively participating in several bids for projects in Europe, and was selected in 2022 to build as many as six units in Poland, which will rely heavily on local contractors. They will be Poland's first nuclear reactors, so information and lessons learned from the construction of the Vogel units in Georgia will be key to ensuring an on-time and on-cost delivery. Once Vogel is completed and lessons have been learned, it could help start other projects in the US. Vogel is being finished at a time when some alternatives to nuclear are expensive, unpopular, and don't provide the same type of large, reliable power. And the conditions may be right to move and start other nuclear projects that people have been proposing around the US. As we've seen, there's no shortage of new designs and sizes available. The US nuclear industry needs to build on this success and work towards a low carbon future while ensuring that safety remains a top priority. But also rethinking the approach to how nuclear plants are designed, constructed, and operated. Repeated projects that are over budget and over a decade late are certainly not going to be acceptable. So what do you think? What does Vogel's criticality mean for the US nuclear industry? Let me know down in the comments below. And thanks for joining me today. I'll see you in the next one.